everybody. This is Jeremy Ryder, Enterprise Architect with Network Solutions. And I wanted to take a few minutes just to dive into DNA Center. Uh, it's been a couple years since uh, DNA Center was introduced, but I still think a number of people have not gotten the opportunity to see the interface. Um, and I think if you do, you'll you get a sense for one, what is DNA Center? And two, what does it do? Uh, and maybe more importantly, what does it do for me? So let's dive in here. Um, this is the first page that you'll come to, Network Snapshot. Number one, answering the question kind of of what is DNA Center? Um, it is a network controller, right? So we're comfortable with wireless LAN controllers, which are network controllers for our wireless infrastructure. Uh, I've got one box that controls a bunch of other box boxes on the network, in this case, the controller to the uh, AP, whether I have 10 APs, 100 APs, or 1,000 APs, right? I can control all those devices. DNA Center is the same thing, but now we introduce it for our entire infrastructure. So switches, routers, uh, the wireless controller and the access point itself, all those can be controlled and managed and operated and monitored by DNA Center. And so first of all, I see right here, I've got uh, 10 sites on my network. I, I get to see a snapshot on my network, 10 sites, 71 devices, uh, you know, a couple policies, profiles, images, etc. cetera. Um, DNA Center uh, allows us to have all this information at our fingertips and uh, I want to emphasize that it's live, right? I'm recording this 3.05 in the afternoon on April 15th and my latest update for my infrastructure, I might see this update, is April 15th at 3.04 and there you go, just as I said, it updated 3.05, right? So it is live and it is current. It's not outdated like a Visio drawing or an Excel spreadsheet. It's live and it's current. Now, one of the benefits that we get from a controller is uh, the, the ability to really start from a high level view and design my network, right? Real simply, I can start with, well, where is this going? What locations uh, 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 compromise my, um, my entire network infrastructure? And so I can start there and there's more DNS, DHCP, AAA, NTP, all this kind of stuff we can, we can state as part of our design for our network. Well, then I jump into policy. More and more, I've got to build my network out from a policy perspective, right? It's not enough just to throw a couple switches in and connect the wires together. I've got to really envision what are my security policies? What are my performance policies? My application policies that are tied to those. DNA Center allows you to configure those centrally, manage those centrally, and, and, and hopefully more consistently and more reliably those policies are applied and set up than they would have been in the past, right? All that, once all of that is set up, once we've got our plan in place, design and policy, our plan, we can provision our network and push all that information down to our actual infrastructure. So reality is, uh, for the most part, these three um, make up our network controller, I would say, design, policy, and provision. And more than likely, if you're gonna go through those steps, you're gonna have network solutions in, to uh, kind of help guide you through those and make sure this gets set up correctly. Uh, but once we're through with that, once we've installed it, got it set up, got it configured, and it's up and running, the piece that you'll be left with is assurance. And that's really what I want to focus on today. Assurance, and I'll just jump to the page here, is really a monitoring utility. Uh, now it's more than your traditional monitoring utilities. That's what we see on the left-hand side of the screen here, right? Network devices and network health. If you've had SolarWinds, if you've had Logic Monitor, if you've had uh, Cisco Prime infrastructure, you've gotten a lot of great information on the health of your network devices, right? What's the CPU utilization? What's the memory utilization on this box? Do I have inter uh, interface error, excuse me? Do I have discards, those kind of things? Uh, but what I have lacked in the past is somebody else's perspective on the matter. And that's where we get into client health, right? I can see both the health of my wired clients, how do they view my network is doing? Because SolarWinds or Logic Monitor or Prime Infrastructure, they may have greens across the board, but if the infrastructure is slow from the client's perspective, it's slow and they'll let you know about it. So we've got both wired client monitoring and wireless client monitoring, uh, a couple different things to look at from each perspective and so uh, they kind of split those out here, right? Now, if you don't care about any of that, I just wanna know what's going on. What are the issues, right? We can jump into here and I see my top 10 issues and I can start 
you know, if you're a, a checklist person, perhaps maybe we can, let's start with the first one. We got a P1 interface gig, 103 is drawing power in excess of allocated um, configured power, these 10 milliwatts that were allowed on that port. All right, uh, well, to be honest with you, I don't know what to do with this. The good news is not only do we have network monitoring, network device monitoring, not only do we have monitoring from the client's perspective, client monitoring, uh, the dashboard gives you top 10 issues and then suggested actions, right? There's some intelligence baked into all of the alerts that we see within DNA Center that are going to help you troubleshoot faster and more reliably. These suggested actions come from Cisco TAC, right? And, and they've got, you know, maybe a, a checklist of their own that says, hey, when you see this issue, you should probably start with these things to troubleshoot. So what are we going to do? Step one, verify there is adequate power remaining. Um, for the system power. Okay, well, that sounds like a great idea. I'm not sure how to actually do that. Well, the good news is, um, along with this embedded intelligence, is embedded access to the infrastructure, right? I'm the controller. I see there's an issue over on, we'll say, switch one. Um, and so I've got to go run these commands on switch one. Well, it's right here. I can hit run, and all of a sudden, show power inline is executing on that switch, and I can see, okay, available. Uh, you know, maybe I've never seen this before, but it's fairly intuitive. 822 available watts, 69.7 are used, and that leaves us with 752. Seems like to me there is plenty of power on this system, and that is not our issue, but a good place to start. And you can move down through the rest of these uh, suggested actions to hopefully find uh, a resolution. Uh, if not, last but not least, we say, hey, if above actions did not resolve the issue, collect tech support. Uh, output and contact Cisco Tech. Um, and so we can step through that process, reach out to Cisco uh, using our service agreement and get their support even more. So those are the top 10 issues. We've got network devices, we've got wired, uh, wired and wireless client health. Um, you're probably familiar with networks. So I won't spend a, time, ten, a ton of time on that. We'll jump into client health. Network health is just uh, your your standard uh, reporting metrics. Like I said, CPU utilization, uh, memory utilization, interface statistics as far as uh, you know throughput, transmit, receive, all that kind of stuff um, that you're accustomed to seeing on a traditional platform. Now, wireless health is a different animal uh, and, and pretty, pretty unique and pretty cool uh, if you're a network engineer trying to troubleshoot this information. Um, we've got both wireless and wired, like I said, kind of different animal. Uh, one of the major things that we see is just this whole onboarding process, right, uh, that is involved with uh, wireless clients. So uh, first of all, it says we've got 249 active clients, 234 were onboarded successfully, 15 did not onboard. Um, of these 234, we've got 90% good connectivity, 1.2% uh, failed with AAA, fair, you know. We've got some details here that we can dive into, right? And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump into the actual details. Now I can see here, okay, 234 onboarded AAA. Interesting. So I want to see the ones that failed AAA. Luther, Mia, and Aaliyah. Okay. How about the ones that just didn't onboard at all? I've got Gordon, uh, William Roy. Oh, you know what? William Roy is calling into my help desk. Hold on. Hello, William. All right. And this is the reality. In DNA Center, um, since I can be client focused, since ICE is giving me all this kind of information on who's connected to what and where, I can jump in and just using the username's name, uh, pull up a new page. So this is called User360 or Client360, and I'm going to start to get information um, specific to William. Right, so he calls in. You can see I've got a tab here for his iPad. They also, if he was connected via desktop, via maybe his iPhone on the guest network or something like that, you'd see other tabs here for those devices. Now, to be honest with you, this is a lab environment, a demo environment, um, and they're kind of fabricating the actual failures. So uh, this guy's having a terrible experience. Hopefully, this is over the past 24 hours, he would have called in sooner. Hopefully, he would call in. But I mean, the reality is for a lot of clients as well, um, they're going to call in the next day or the next morning, right? Say he has an issue from 4 o'clock uh, until 5 o'clock. It's the end of the day. He doesn't much feel like dealing. He's just upset that his wireless won't connect. And so he comes in the next day and he calls you or I and he says, hey, I was trying to get on the wireless yesterday and I could not. 
um, what's the deal, right? And sometimes that's as much information as uh, our poor help desk representatives get. And so uh, another awesome feature of DNA Center is just being able to go back in time, right? I slid my uh, time sliders here to 3.56 p.m. to 5.11 p.m. I can look in that time. Okay, it actually shows no issues here, but we can go through and see what the onboarding, what SSID he was connecting to, what AP, right? It said I had one other client at the time, not a ton, pretty sparse environment, but I do get a, a 10 as far as a health uh, score is concerned. Um, so most likely that's not the issue. Uh, and then I can get into some really detailed uh, information as far as um, these records being deleted, authentication, uh, deauthentication, so on and so forth. And it's all timestamped. You can see this is happening a lot. Um, he's clearly having an authentication issue, right? Um, where it, it begins and then we just have to delete it with his e-client. So uh, something maybe a little bit more advanced. Um, but the information is captured there from a historical perspective and we can drill in specifically for William Roy here and his iPad what kind of experience he was having and honestly that's just information I don't see presented in any other um, software at this point. So that is client health, network health, and application health. This one is in beta so I kind of offer it with a caveat but that's another beauty of um, DNA Center, right? It is a software platform, software-defined networking almost that Cisco is offering here, right? And so they continue to build and evolve and uh, introduce new features uh, that are relevant to uh, any of us operators out here, right? So what Application Health basically does is say, you know, from a performance perspective, users are pretty important, but um, almost, almost what Triumph trumps that, I should say, is the health of the application, right? So with all this visibility that I have into my infrastructure and the packets that are passing forth and I can timestamp stuff and see latencies and, and utilization, all that kind of stuff, can I have some information on how my critical applications are doing? And in this case, my business relevant applications, right? So you can go in and you can name, this is one of the policies you set up, right? And say, I have business relevant applications inclusive of medical records, binary over HTTP, don't know what that is, but it's specific to this environment, right? Citrix, Bing, that's a curious one to show up in my business relevant, but if you name it, it's relevant, right? And so for the applications that I'm concerned with, I'm 93% healthy, right? I am having an issue, poor. Microsoft Office 365 and WebEx, so ton of usage of Office 365, probably a ton of WebEx usage, I need to get these under control. Now for irrelevant traffic, maybe, um, my, you know, I just need to see how much of my traffic on my network is actually irrelevant, right? Now I got Disney Web Portal here, 10% of my uh, network traffic is Disney. Um, so we can decrement that from a priority perspective uh, but we're still giving you information on where uh, and how much of this traffic is being utilized. If I got the bandwidth, I'll offer my users YouTube. If I don't have the bandwidth though, that needs to get squashed, right? Same with, in this case, Skype. Maybe Skype needs to be one of your business relevant applications. We can accommodate that. So a ton of great information. I know that's a quick overview of what DNA Center is. But number one, DNA Center is a controller. Number two, DNA Center is a, I'll, I'll call it a next-gen monitoring solution because uh, we can look at network um, as most traditional uh, monitoring solutions do, but I can also look at client and application health um, from the user's perspective, and that really gives me a, a leg up in, in trying to troubleshoot issues and uh, just provide consistent, reliable service uh, to our end users. Hopefully this was helpful, uh, and hopefully... Um, you found it a good use of your time. If you have any questions regarding DNA Center, feel free to reach out and uh, we'll, we'll set up a direct meeting here. So have a great day.